My name is Megan Kerr and I am pleased to be taking you through the new product information transfer for Unisys Data Exchange Release 6.0. In this new product information transfer, we will introduce our new transformation source kind. We will touch on the Kafka partition key, discuss Kafka Avro message format and JDBC sync support. We will take a look at the new Explore page in the Data Exchange Management Studio. We will explain the new concept of streams. We will see how to migrate previous transformation runs. We will take you through some of the main administration site changes. Discuss the changes to bulk copy. Introduce our runtime service failover functionality. Explain the scale out feature. Discuss the data cleansing policy settings. And last but not least, we will cover the information center improvements. New transformation source. Data Exchange enables Unisys clients to securely extract, transform, and load data from their ClearPath data stores to commodity data stores. This enables our clients to make use of commodity business intelligence and reporting tools to analyze their data in near real time without adversely impacting their running applications. Data Exchange can enable data integration with minimal disruption to normal business operations and overhead. For our MCP clients, Data Exchange enables the transformation of data from DMS2 to SQL Server, Oracle, and Kafka. MCP clients are also able to transform data from SQL Server into DMS2. Our OS2200 clients can use Data Exchange to transform data from RDMS to SQL Server, Oracle, and Kafka. With the release of 6.0, our OS2200 clients can now also transfer data from DMS to Kafka. Kafka Partition Key Release 5.0 enabled transformation to a Kafka target. In Release 5.0, Kafka messages used the batch ID as a message key were defined in XML format, contained multiple updates from the source data store. With the release of 6.0, users can define a target feature from their feature mapping to be their message key. When the user has opted to specify their message key, each message will contain a single update to the classifier in question. Apache Avro Message Format Release 6.0 of Data Exchange supports Apache Avro Message Format. Avro is a data serialization system. Apache Avro messages are written and read in a JSON-like format. Data, however, is stored in a binary format, making it compact, efficient, and more secure. Avro includes APIs for Java, Python, Ruby, C, and C++, just to name a few. Data Exchange 6.0 supports Confluent Schema Registration. Data Exchange will automatically register the relevant schemas for the transformation before sending messages. Data Exchange users can choose if they wish to include message metadata like transaction information. For non-RDMS source types, before images can also be added to the Avro format message if desired. Confluent JDBC Sync With Data Exchange Avro message format support, users can make use of the Confluent Java Database Connectivity Sync to assist with the task of consuming their data into multiple relational database types. JDBC supports a magnitude of data stores, including Apache Hive, Apache Derby, and MySQL, to name just a few. JDBC supports the auto creation of tables. Users can write their own custom converter if their schema contains complex data types like groups, or 
utilize readily available converters like Avro with Schema Registry. Note that to use readily available converters, users should not include the message metadata. DEMS Explore The new DEMS Explore option allows you to quickly see all your data exchange components at a glance. All Windows components are automatically registered during installation and users can manually register and unregister the MCP services and OS2200 services. The DEMS Explore options enables a user to view various properties of each component and include an alias and description for each data exchange component. Users can see when a component was registered and more. Having each component registered with DEMS enables Data Exchange to provide a drop down list of available components for schema loading, transformation deployment selection, and more. Streams. Previously, all activated transformations would run at the same time for an application group if OS2200 or a data store if an MCP or Windows source kind. Release 6.0 introduces the concept of streams. A stream is a collection of one or more transformations for a given application group for OS2200 or for a given data store if an MCP or Windows source kind. In the administration site, create one or more streams for your data to flow within. Each stream will run independently. Streams exist as the lowest level node under your source machine in the administration site source data location pane. Before attempting to create a stream, deploy your transformations to the administration site. For an OS2200 source, select your application group. For a DMS2 or SQL Server source, select your source data store. From the Stream tab, click Create. The basic information pertaining to your stream, such as the stream name, description and relevant transformations, need entering first. Once this is done, click Next. Next, you must define what registered components your stream will run on. The drop-down list will show all matching release level MCP services and runtime service instances that you have registered in DEMS within the same environment. The scale-out option will be discussed later in the snippet. Following scale-out is the MCP connection settings. If you're interested in the more advanced stream settings, Toggle the advanced settings at the top right hand corner of the screen. Click Next. The details listed in the advanced settings depends on your target kind. Where applicable, you could see the target commit error handling settings and secure connection settings. Click Next. The final display is a summary of the options you selected. Before the summary information is displayed, Data Exchange will attempt to verify the AIS connection details entered exist, and if your stream targets Kafka, the Kafka details are valid. If a problem is detected with either or both options, a warning is displayed at the top of the page. You must correct the issue in the warning before a BDT or CDT can run on the stream. The warnings, however, will not prevent the stream from being created. After clicking Create, Data Exchange will run through a final set of checks and, assuming all is well, your stream will be created. Back on the summary page for my DMS2 data store, you can see I now have two streams. I have Production Test you just saw me create and my existing preeminent data project one. You can see the status of both streams is not started. We can see the transformations each stream contains, and if we expand that, we can see the relevant targets. 
If you recall, we had a warning about the AIS connection when creating the stream production test. That is why you will see a warning symbol beside the production test stream here. If you have used Data Exchange before, you may have noticed that when creating the stream, we were asked to enter a number of details that, prior to this release, you would enter when starting a bulk or change data transformation. With the introduction of streams, it made sense to save these typically static options as part of the stream. This has the added benefit of simplifying the BDT and CDT start process. Let's take a look at starting a BDT and CDT for a stream. Since creating the stream production test, I have created the AIS connection I entered for the stream. Let's start a BDT for our new production test stream. To do this, I select production test from the source data location pane and then select start bulk data transformation. A BDT for a DMS2 system will present you with the option to specify a clone of your source data store or you could enter the source data store details. Once you have entered the source data store details, click start. Data Exchange will then attempt to start the BDT. The stream summary page will show you the status of your BDT. If we click on the monitor icon, we will see the monitor page for our BDT. When the BDT has completed, back on the summary page, we can click on the details icon to view the details from our BDT. Let's take a look at starting a CDT. Click Start and Changed Data Transformation. This example is a DMS2 source, so I will enter the audit file I wish to start the CDT from and click Start. That is all we need. Alternatively, because my BDT was performed with locks, I could resume change data transformation. I'll be displayed the resume information to which I click yes, resume. Data Exchange will perform its last minute checks and provided all as well, it will resume the CDT. You can see the summary page is displaying the status of the CDT. Again, I can click on the monitor icon to monitor my CDT. Migration. During the installation of the runtime service for release 6.0, you will not see an option to migrate tracking data. In release 6.0, your tracking data is migrated when you start your newly created stream that contains a transformation created in a lower release level. Our stream preeminent data project one contains a transformation created in a prior release. So let's see how we migrate the tracking data to resume our transformation from a previous release. Select the stream in question from the source data location pane, then click start change data transformation. The administrative service will detect if your newly created stream contains a transformation from a lower release level. And if the stream has never been run, you will be asked if you wish to start a new CDT or resume from your previous CDT. If you select start a new CDT, you will be prompted to enter the starting point for the CDT. We will click resume previous CDT to see the migration process. Once you have selected that you wish to resume, you will need to specify the connection details for the previous releases tracking database. When this is filled in, click Start. Data Exchange will then handle the migration of data from the previous releases tracking database into your 6.0 tracking database. Data Exchange will then automatically resume the CDT when done. Voila, preeminent Data Project 1 CDT has been resumed. Administration Site Changes Release 6.0 contains some changes to the administration site. Let's walk through them. Under Application Group for an OS2200 source host, 
or under the source data store for a DMS2 or SQL Server source, you can see your defined streams. You can see at a quick glance the status of each stream and what transformations are included within each stream. From there, you can expand again to see the targets for the transformation. In the Transformations tab, you can see the transformations deployed for the given application group or source data store. If the transformation has been assigned to a stream, you can see which stream the transformation is assigned to and the version number of the transformation. You may have noticed over in the source data location pane, the status icons changed while we were looking at the Transformations tab. The host kind, machine, and data store or application group will detail the last status change to the streams under them. I can see at a glance that one of my MCP streams has stopped running due to an error. I can also gather that one of my OS 2200 streams is attempting to recover processing. These events occurred due to the fact that I momentarily lost connection to the hosts. I expect that if recovery is successful for my application group, the icons will change again. But let's continue to look at the other changes to the administration site. If all your deployed transformations have been assigned to streams, or you simply have not deployed any transformations, you cannot create a new stream. For App Group 16, you can see we have both of the deployed transformations assigned to a stream. If I go back to the Streams tab and click Create, I will receive an error to let me know that I do not have any transformations to create a new stream with. On the Stream Summary tab, we can see the Component Health card. Notice I have more than one runtime service listed in the Component Health for Preeminent Data Project 2. That's because this stream is making use of the runtime service failover feature we will discuss later in this snippet. Next to the component health card is the stream status card. To view the monitor page, there is a monitor icon on the stream status card. To view the details from a previously run BDT, click on the Details icon. Bulk Copy The Bulk Data Transformation Bulk Copy feature was first made available in Release 5.0. Bulk Copy is for SQL Server and Oracle targets only. It made use of the SQL Server and Oracle's ability to insert bulk data. Bulk copy was available for direct replication only. That is to say, it could not perform transformations of data, nor could it apply classifier filters. In release 5.0, bulk copy was a separate executable file installed with the runtime service. It was helpful for clients with less than 50 columns in their target tables. Release 6.0 extends the bulk copy feature to allow transformation of a user's data, including classifier filtering. It also supports XML types for SQL Server transformation targets. Bulk copy is no longer an executable installed alongside the runtime service. Bulk copy is part of the runtime service and it can be turned on via the runtime service config file. In the runtime service config file, modify the value of the command type in target SQL Server, if you have a SQL Server target, to single SQL bulk copy or stored procedure bulk copy. If your transformation target is Oracle, then you can modify the command type in target Oracle to batch SQL bulk copy. Runtime service failover. In Data Exchange 6.0, we are pleased to announce a high availability option for the Runtime Service Component. The Runtime Service Component is the Windows component of Data Exchange that reads messages sent from the host database service, transforms, and commits the messages to each user-defined target. 
With Release 6.0, to create a runtime service pool, users can install multiple runtime service instances across numerous machines. Each runtime instance must point to the same SQL Server instance for the tracking database, and they must all be of the same version. In my example here, I have three runtime services in my pool. I'm calling them Node1, Node2 and Node3, where Node1 is my primary runtime service. When the stream is performing change data transformation, if the primary runtime service goes down, the administrative service will attempt to resume the CDT from another runtime service in the pool. For example, Node2. If that fails, the administrative service will attempt to resume the CDT from the primary runtime service again. If the primary runtime service is still down, the administrative service will attempt the resume on Node 3. If Node 3 works, the CDT will continue on that machine until the CDT is stopped. The next time the CDT is resumed, the administrative service will attempt to resume the CDT from the primary runtime service again. When creating or editing a stream and one of the runtime services from a pool is selected as the primary runtime service, Data Exchange will automatically detect the auxiliary runtime services from that pool. My preeminent data project 2 is a mixture of RDMS and DMS data stores targeting Kafka. This stream uses Apache Avro. If I wanted to add metadata to my Avro message, I could define which data I wanted here. For this stream, I do not wish to have any metadata. After I update my stream, I can start the CDT. You can see the component health card tells me that my primary runtime service is currently active with the other nodes idle. The monitor page shows that I am indeed processing transactions. Now if I terminate my primary runtime service, you will see Data Exchange report the connection failure, then start the auto recovery to resume the CDT from the next node in my pool of runtime services. Let's check the monitor page to verify our CDT is processing transactions. We will start our primary runtime service and then take down our active runtime service. Yet again, we will see the connection failure reported, auto recovery activated and drum roll. The CDT resumed from my primary runtime service. Scale out. Scaleout enables users to split the workload of a stream. With Scaleout, transactions need to be independent as they will not be applied in chronological order to the targets. The Scaleout feature is available with one or more runtime services. If you have multiple runtime services, then they need to all use the same tracking DB and be of the same release level. If using Scaleout on a single runtime service, the workload is shared via multiple threads. Scaleout environments are supported by runtime service failover functionality.
It is important to note that the scale out functionality is only available during changed data transformation. Scale out is defined when creating a stream that has yet to run CDT. A stream's scale out details cannot be changed once the stream has been created. Data cleansing. In Data Exchange 6.0, users can define data cleansing policy settings for their RDMS and DMS schemas. The data cleansing policy enables users to define a default data value to be used when corrupt data is detected in the source database whilst performing a BDT or CDT from RDMS and DMS schemas. To access the data cleansing policy setting for a schema, right click on the schema Select Advance and then click Data Cleansing Policy Setting. Alternatively, select the Source Schema and in the Properties pane under Data Cleansing Policy Setting, set the value of Replace Invalid Data to Yes. The dialog will display the different data types from your schema it would most likely expect to see bad data in. The dialog will allow you to define a default value for the different data types in your schema. You can enter just the generic numeric unsigned value to use on all your numeric unsigned data types, or you can specify a specific value for each of the different numeric unsigned data types. To add a data type not already displayed, do the following. Click Add Data Type. A list of data types supported by the schema will be displayed. Select the data type. Enter a default value and then click Add. The data type appears on the top of the list. You can delete the data types that you added. To delete a data type, hover over the data type and then click the Delete icon. With your data cleansing policy defined, if Data Exchange Runtime detects invalid data, the invalid data will be substituted with your defined default values into your target. This will be logged in the data transform error log file. Information Center. Release 6.0 brings with it a new look information center. The new information center is search oriented. You can taper down the information shown to you by toggling between MCP or OS 2200. The information center includes an updated content library. You can download the PDF and other documents from the new Information Centre. And new to the Information Centre is the video library. New videos will continue to be added to this section. We hope you find them helpful and informative. Thank you for your interest in Unisys Data Exchange Release 6.0.